everyone has been saying 8 gigabyte graphics cards are not enough in 2025, which I mostly agree with. But if that's the case, what the f am I supposed to do with this? This is an NVIDIA Quadro K2200, a 4GB graphics card from the Kepler generation of GPUs. Kepler is the 700 series of graphics cards and this is the workstation version that has one key feature in its favor. It's entirely bus powered, which on paper can make this a seemingly appealing option for the Optiplex crowd. I got this one for free with the HP Z440 I used to make the $350 gaming PC but they seem to go for about $25 on eBay. The test system for this graphics card is powered by a Ryzen 5 4600G, 12 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Look, I know this isn't phenomenal, but this shouldn't hold back our little friend here. Well, let's not waste any more time. Here are the benchmarks. All right, let's boot up Doom the Dark Ages and... Well, that's all right. Moving on. Let's just boot up Oblivion Remastered. Oh, I didn't like that one either. Maybe we're pushing the card a little too hard. Let's go with a simpler DX11 title like Baldur's Gate 3. Hey, it seems to be launched. I can even see the game running. Okay, cool. Okay, let's click on the game. Hmm. Didn't like that either. Marvel Rivals. Can can you get this started? No? <laughs> Thanks. As you can see, the card lacks the instruction sets and the power to get these games to work. And that's going to be a problem that continues to grow as the card ages further and further into obscurity until it endures its own version of the question. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? Anyways, we actually managed to get Forza Horizon 5 running, and despite all the failures in the other games, it ran very smoothly. 1080p, low settings, we averaged 40 FPS. That's a whole 10 more than 30. But 1% lows were 33 and 0.1 was 25. A smooth experience. A great start. Kind of. Another staple of potato gaming is Fortnite. Did you know Fortnite turns eight years old this September? It might explain why our 11-year-old graphics card can run it. But nevertheless, I'm happy with what the K2200 could do in this game. 1080p, performance mode, epic view distance, we were able to average 113 FPS. Now, you and I know that is mostly down to the CPU carrying harder than LeBron James on the 2018 Cavaliers. Nevertheless, a great result for the Quadrail. A sports reference on a tech channel? I hope that goes over better than a tech reference on a sports channel. Well, let's keep the good vibes going and the frame rates high. In Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p low settings, we averaged 102 FPS. But to be fair, I think I could get 100 FPS on my air fryer, but the experience is what we're testing and the experience was very playable. The question isn't whether the GPU is better than a kitchen appliance, but they probably are close. Rounding out our suite, we broke out GTA 5 again, which is a staple of the low-end gaming suite. To answer your question, yes, it can run 5M. At 1080p, normal settings, GTA 5 averaged 50 FPS with 38 and 36 1% and 0.1% lows, respectively. So, to answer the question, can you game on a $25 graphics card? I would say, yes, with very tempered expectations, you honestly can have a decent experience, at least in older games. Now, should you game on a $25 GPU? No, I really don't think so. At least not this one. I was going to say this could be a decent option for an emulation box for your living room, but SteamOS or the spinoffs like Chimera or Bazite 
really prefer AMD GPUs. I recently picked up an RX 470 for $30 on eBay, and that's kind of the limit of the things that are even usable in niche use cases. Look, I'm not the person who's always recommending spend more money, but in this case, I do. And that brings us to the end of another video. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing and letting me know down in the comments if this is a card you would consider or if it's a bridge too far, even for you. Many thanks for watching all the way to the end and check out my last video where I built a $350 gaming PC that plays everything. I'll see you again soon and until next time, stay lucky.